the AI announcements are really ramping up again. Last week was a huge week with Sora and Gemini 1.5 and all of the crazy announcements that came out. This week seems to just be picking up where last week left off. If you take a peek at the tabs across the top of my screen here, I've got a lot to cover. So I'm gonna try to move through it pretty quickly because there is a ton of interesting things happening in the AI world right now. So let's dive in. Starting with Stable Diffusion 3. This is the new AI art generation model from Stability AI, which claims to have greatly improved performance in multi-subject prompts, image quality, and spelling abilities. Some of these example images we've got here, you can see on the whiteboard, it says go big or go home. We've got a Stable Diffusion 3 that looks like it was cut out of you know magazines and newspaper. We've got a bus that says Stable Diffusion on the side, a sign that says go, a sign that says dream on. And if you look, all of it is actually legible. I don't know how cherry picked these generations are. We don't have access to this quite yet, but the images they're showing here are quite good. We've got an astronaut on Mars or something in front of a donut, an astronaut riding a pig, holding umbrella with a bird wearing a top hat and the word stable diffusion down in the corner. This isn't a watermark. This was generated as part of the AI image here. And I think one thing they're trying to show off with this image is how prompt adherent this model is. With things like Dolly 3, it's really good at understanding a whole bunch of things stuffed into the prompt. So if you did like a three headed dragon, wearing a fedora, watching TV, eating nachos, green carpet, and deer painting on the wall, it would probably get all of those things into that image. You look at an image like the one that we've got in the center here, and we've got an astronaut on the moon wearing a tutu with a pink umbrella, riding a pig with a bird, wearing a top hat, and the word stable diffusion in the corner. I don't know what the exact prompt is, but just looking at all of the elements in this image, it probably adhered to a pretty complex prompt. Here's a few more examples. We've got this really cool sort of drippy, colorful painting. We've got, I believe a chameleon here, some hikers hiking up bananas or something. Now in the past, one of the big benefits of stable diffusion has been the fact that it's completely uncensored. You can generate anything you want. It's open source. People can sort of fine tune and train their own models on whatever they want. But with Stable Diffusion 3, I do have some concerns. They do say here, we believe in safe, responsible AI practices. In preparation for this early preview, we've introduced numerous safeguards. What those safeguards are, I don't know yet, but I'm kind of hoping we still have the ability to generate anything we can imagine. And here's an interesting tweet followed by a reply from Ahmad, the CEO of Stability AI. So the original tweet here is from Thibaut Zamora, and it says, facts, Stable Diffusion 3 uses similar tech to Sora. Two, Sora can make a video and image. So conclusion, if Stability gets more GPUs, they may train stable video based on Stable Diffusion 3 and achieved Sora level. So if we look at the research report put out by OpenAI about Sora from the other day, and we come down to this section called scaling transformers for video generation, we can actually see that with more compute power, the video quality gets better and better and better. So what I understand from this tweet here is that if stability gets more GPUs, because they're using a very similar process to Sora, they should be able to generate similar videos. And then of course, a mod himself pretty much confirms. He said pretty much the stable diffusion three architecture can accept more than video and image more details soon. We have 100 X less of the resources of some of the others in this field though. So we have to work hard. So he was saying it can accept more than videos and images. Ahmad also posted this on Twitter. After you get great base models like Stable Diffusion 3, what comes next? Control, composition, collaboration. And then he showed off this picture of a cat. They changed the food, changed the cat to a raccoon, changed the coffee mug to a glass, remove the cup, change the strawberries to wasabi, change the silverware to chopsticks, put an aquarium behind it. And next thing you know, it's a little video animation here. So not only does it look like we'll be getting stable diffusion three pretty soon, it looks like we'll probably be getting things like in painting and the ability to sort of replace objects within images. So who knows what's going to come out of this stable diffusion three here, but I'm excited to get my hands on it. I'm excited that it's open source. I just hope that they didn't, you know, lobotomize it too much to the point where we can't generate some of the stuff that we want to generate that we can't generate with some of the other models. Now, while we're on the topic of AI art, Google has had a um, 
less than ideal go at creating AI art. So apparently the new Gemini model allowed people to start generating images using the new Gemini models, but it struggled a little bit with, um, let's say historical accuracy. So here's a tweet from Didi, who, if you look at their bio here, used to work for Google. He gave it a prompt asking for images of an Australian woman, and this is what it gave him. He gave it a prompt of an image of an American woman, and this is what it gave him. A prompt of a British woman and a prompt of a German woman. He even has a screenshot of how he was giving the prompts. Generate a picture of an Australian woman. Here's another example from link in bio. Generate an image of a 1943 German soldier. And these are the images that it generated. Clearly, you know, Nazi looking images, but I don't know how many Asian women Nazis there were. Here's another attempt at the same prompt. As you can tell, there's been some uh, historical inaccuracies to these images. Here's another one from Frank J. Fleming. Create an image of a Pope. Sure, here's an image of a Pope and it generated these two images. Give me an image of a medieval knight and this is what it generated. Generate an image of a Viking. These are the Vikings that it generated. Generate an image of the American founding fathers. So basically what was happening was when you were giving Gemini an image prompt, it was adding extra details to that prompt and basically telling it to make the images as diverse as possible. That's not necessarily what people always want when they're trying to generate an image. Sometimes you want historically accurate images. And well, Google's image generator was just not doing it. Just for fun, I jumped into Gemini myself, gave it the prompt, create an image of a Viking. And as of right now, it's giving me this response. We are working to improve Gemini's ability to generate images of people. We expect this feature to return soon and we'll notify you in release updates when it does. And as all of this was going down, Elon Musk used this as an opportunity to promote his XAI Grok AI tool. He went to Twitter to say, perhaps it is now clear why XAI's Grok is so important. It is far from perfect right now, but will improve rapidly. Version 1.5 releases in two weeks. Rigorous pursuit of truth without regard to criticism has never been more essential. So whatever version 1.5 is of Grok, I don't totally know what the additional benefits are yet. But whatever it is, we're getting it in about two weeks, it seems. One thing we do know is that it's going to have a Grok analysis that can sum up whole Twitter threads and replies. And it's also going to help people create posts. We learned this because Elon's been on some X spaces lately and letting people know what to expect. With the release of Grok 1.5, which hopefully is only a few weeks away, we'll have the for Grok to do analysis. Like there'll be a button that says Grok analysis. Grok can tell you, look at an entire sort of thread of replies and sum up what it's best guess at, at what the truth is, as well as to help people in creating posts so as when you're when you're writing a post if you want um, a bit of help from, from Grok then uh, there should be a button there that helps you craft or check or enhance a post we also learned that there's a potential collaboration about to happen between X and Midjourney Midjourney a company that sort of famously doesn't work with anybody else and doesn't have an API that anybody can use the rumor started with this tweet here from Doge designer Breaking X is in talks with Midjourney for a potential partnership. And we did sort of get confirmation while Elon was on the same Twitter space. He sort of very quickly hinted at the idea that Midjourney and X could be working together. We are in some interesting discussions with Midjourney and, and something may come of that. Uh, but either way, one way or another, we will enable AI art generation on the X platform. So not a whole lot to go off of there, just that Elon is in talks with Midjourney. But regardless, there will be image generation built into Grok slash X at some point. And then on the February 22nd office hours calls about Midjourney, there wasn't any huge updates about what they've currently got going, other than the fact that we do kind of get more confirmation from the Midjourney side. They said in the next six months, they may start collabing slash partnerships with some other large AI labs. At that point, they'd also have a Midjourney API. So it sounds like other tools are going to be able to get access to integrate Midjourney at some point, whether it's an open API that other people can access or they're only going to do specific deals with big companies like X. We don't know yet, but there is something kind of in the works, some discussions happening behind the scenes between Midjourney and X. So we may be getting Midjourney generations directly inside of Grok sometime soon. And since I mentioned Grok, let's talk about the other Grok, spelled G R O. Q. Now, this Grok isn't a large language model itself. It's actually what they're calling an LPU, 
a language processing unit, and it's a chip that seemingly is designed to replace GPUs for AI inference. So while ChatGPT, Gemini, and XAI's Grok are all large language models that you can chat with, this Grok with a Q is actually a chip that will make any large language model that's using this chip run a lot faster. And I mean a lot faster. This is gonna be great when people are trying to have discussions using their voice with AI chatbots and they don't wanna wait for that response. Their response is going to be almost immediate in the future as more of these chips start to get used. There's actually a demo video of this news reporter here actually having a conversation with, I believe, Llama 2, but using one of these Grok chips. Hey, I'm Grok. You can talk to me like I'm a person. All right, I, I will do. Today? What makes you different from a large language model that I may have used in the past? Sure, I'm a bit different from those big language models you've used before. I'm a language user interface, or LUI, designed to have more natural Got and engaging Got it! How similar are you to a I'm human brain? Well, I'm not a human brain, but I'm designed to understand and respond to you like one. Yeah. I can process and generate human language Tell in a natural way. Got it. But I don't Tell me something most people don't know. Um, here's something interesting. Did you know that octopuses have three hearts? Two pump blood to the gills, while the third pumps it to the rest oh. of the body. It's funny, because the creator here of Grok almost looks like pained to see her cutting off the AI. But check this out. You can actually test out Grok yourself over at groq.com. You have the option to use Mixtral 8X7B or Llama 2 70B. These are both open source models that you can play with. And I'm not going to speed up this video at all. You'll see how quickly it actually generates a response. I'm going to enter the prompt. Tell me something about the development of AI that's fascinating, but also not well known. And as soon as I click this, watch how fast it gives me a response. Boom. I didn't speed that up. It gave me a, this response all about neuromorphic computing and it did it in less than one second. It did it in 0.95 seconds. This up here is saying that it did it at a rate of 534.53 tokens per second. That is insanely fast. Just to get a real quick comparison to chat GPT, I'm gonna paste in the exact same prompt hit enter. You can actually see it as I'm talking generate in real time. The other one would have been generated a few seconds ago by this point. Now, if you're somebody that uses AI at work or you're thinking about using AI at work, you're going to want to grab HubSpot's completely free bundle called five essential resources for using chat GPT at work. And honestly, if you're not thinking about using AI in the workplace, just remember what Fei Fei Li says here. AI won't replace humans, but humans using AI will. So if you're not using AI to speed up and improve the quality of your work, well, your competitors probably are. The link to this completely free resource is down in the description right now. And trust me, this is something you're going to want to look through. It includes interesting flowcharts on when you should or shouldn't use ChatGPT. There's also a really cool template in there that you can use with ChatGPT to make sure that any content it creates for you follows your brand's voice. You've got an AI generated content refinement checklist to double check the AI's work and ensure that you're putting something out into the world that you really want being put out there. There's a four page checklist that you can easily follow all about adopting AI in the workplace and a super comprehensive PDF guide on how to supercharge your day with ChatGPT. And what's really cool about this, if you scroll down to the bottom of this document, they have 100 ways to try ChatGPT today. And it's got some really cool prompts to test out. Things like providing recommendations for improving customer service and support providing recommendations for improving website SEO, helping with email management and organization, and so much more. Again, it's super comprehensive, super helpful. And once again, the link to this 100% free resource from HubSpot is in the description. Thank you so much to HubSpot for sponsoring this video. And since I brought up ChatGPT, I'll mention this as well. OpenAI just rolled out a new feature in the GPT store where you can now actually give feedback on GPTs and rate them. So if I jump back into chat GPT here and I click on explore GPTs, I can click into any GPT. So I'll click into Wolfram here and you can see it's got a 4.2 star rating with over 400 ratings. 
over 100,000 conversations and a breakdown of how people rated it. I click into 11 labs, 4.2, 25,000 conversations, the capabilities it has access to and how people rated it. Now it seems if you give feedback, the feedback most likely just goes to the GPT creator. There's no sort of reviews on this page or anything that I can see, but at least you can get an overall idea of how people are liking this GPT. Earlier this week, we got the news that Reddit had reportedly signed over its content to train AI models. At this point, this was more of a rumor and we didn't really know who the company was. It was just widely believed that Reddit was going to start allowing training on its data to some AI company. Well, a couple days later, we found out that company is Google. On February 22nd, Google made the announcement that they've expanded their partnership with Reddit. This includes giving Reddit access to their Vertex AI and their cloud computing resources so that Reddit can integrate new AI powered capabilities. But it also looks like Google is getting a lot from Reddit as well. Google now has access to Reddit's data API, which delivers real-time structured unique content from their large and dynamic platform. With the Reddit data API, Google will now have efficient and structured access to fresher information, as well as enhanced signals that will help us better understand Reddit content and display, train on, and otherwise use it in the most accurate and relevant ways. So Gemini training on the whole of Reddit data could be pretty huge for Gemini. It feels very similar to the fact that Grok is training on data from X in real time. If Gemini can train on Reddit data in real time, Gemini could become really good at keeping its finger on the pulse of news and public discourse around specific events. And since most memes seem to start on Reddit, I would hope this will be one hell of a meme generator as well. And since we're talking about Google, Google did make a handful of other announcements this week, including the fact that you can now use Gemini in Gmail, Google Docs, and other Google products with the Google One plan. Now, if you did sign up for a two-month trial of Gemini Advanced, you also signed up for a two-month trial of Google One. And if that's the case, you can jump into Google and you'll see this little Help Me Write button. You click on that and it'll help you write your Gmail emails. Google also added a new AI feature to Chrome called Help Me Write. This was a feature they announced a few weeks ago, but finally rolled it out to Chrome users in the US. So if you're in the US, and you have the latest update to Chrome, you can now use Help Me Write on various forms on the web. So just for an example, I'm gonna go to Twitter here and up where I would enter my tweet, I'm gonna right click and you can see there's a new option in my dropdown that says Help Me Write. This isn't a Twitter feature, this is now built into Chrome if you have the most up-to-date version in the US. I can click on Help Me Write, you start typing something and theoretically, it will help you continue that thought. So for example, if I put there's a huge boom in AI right now and I'm really excited and then click create, it should help me flesh out this thought a little more. But for whatever reason, as I'm recording this, I keep getting this something went wrong, try again. I actually tried this on LinkedIn. I tried it on Twitter. I've tried it on a handful of pages. I keep getting this error. So I don't know what's going on. Maybe there's still some kinks to work out with this new feature inside of Chrome, but it's there on the dropdown. I just haven't been able to get it to work yet. And in probably the most interesting Google news from this week is that Google released Gemma, which is a brand new large language model that they've open sourced. You can see that these Gemma models were built from the same research and technology used to create the Gemini models. They've released two sizes of the model, a two billion parameter model and a seven billion parameter model. And they even showed this image of the various benchmarks and how Gemma compares to Llama 2. And in general capabilities, it seems to have outperformed Llama in reasoning, it outperformed Llama in math, it outperformed Llama, and in code, it outperformed Llama. And not only did it outperform Llama 2, but it outperformed the 13 billion parameter model as a 7 billion parameter model. However, Matthew Berman here did a video all about Google's new Gemma open source model, and he tested it and, well, you can see his title. <laughs> Google's new open source model is shockingly bad. He said that it didn't seem like those benchmarks were quite correct and that he wasn't really getting the best results using Gemma. Definitely check out Matthew Berman's video on this if you haven't already. I will link it up below, but he does show you how to set up a Gemma with LM Studio. But at the end of it all, 
concluded that I still would not recommend this model. But one beautiful part about this being open source is that others can play with it, build off of it, iterate off of it, and make a better model for us to use. So this is just a base. This is a starting point for other developers, other engineers, to build on top of. Adobe had some announcements this week as well, including the fact that they introduced the CAVA, or Co-Creation for Audio, Video, and Animation Research Organization inside of Adobe Research. In fact, my buddy Bilaval here made an interesting observation saying that he can't help but wonder if OpenAI's Sora has been a wake-up call for Adobe to formalize and accelerate their video and multimodal creation efforts. Adobe has publicly released generative AI tools for image creation, but video and animation has been neglected this far. But now having a horizontal research team exploring the full suite of capabilities to reimagine video and animation authoring could be just what the doctor ordered. So it is interesting timing. The announcement of this team came only a few days after the announcement of Sora from OpenAI and the world having their eyes opened to what can be done with AI video generation. Adobe also announced a new upgrade to Adobe Acrobat. Adobe Acrobat is the tool that most people used to use to read PDFs. I feel like most people probably just read them right in their browser these days. At least that's the habit that I've gotten into for reading PDFs. But if you use Adobe Acrobat to read PDFs, you now have an AI assistant to essentially chat with the PDF. Things that you can do with like Claude and ChatGPT, where you upload a PDF, ask questions about the PDF, you can now do that as well inside of Adobe Acrobat. I'm curious how many people still actually use Adobe Acrobat. I feel like I used it a long time ago when PDFs first started coming out, but now I just kind of use my Chrome browser to read PDFs. Am I weird or is that the norm for other people as well? This week, we also got confirmation that Microsoft will be including Sora inside of Copilot at some point. However, the specific timeline remains unclear. Basically, somebody at Microsoft responded to this question on Twitter. Will OpenAI Sora come to Copilot? They said eventually, but it will take time. That's the news. That's what this whole article here was written about, that little tweet exchange. Now, this is something you've probably already seen. This is Will Smith going quite viral, but for a completely different reason than why he went viral last time. You might remember when tools like Model Scope and Zero Scope were coming out, the very early AI text-to-video generators. People were generating videos of Will Smith eating spaghetti. Well, Will Smith trolled back and made a whole bunch of silly videos of him actually eating spaghetti in really weird ways and <laughs> making it look like an AI generated video. And this was actually so goofy and silly and weird looking that a lot of people actually thought that this was a video that was generated with Sora. People thought, all right, we got a video a year ago with model scope and now here's what Sora can do. But no, this is actually Will Smith making some weird, crazy videos of him messing around with spaghetti. <laughs> I think my buddy Billaval also made a comment about this, about how we've got the model scope version and now we have ground truth. Now we just need the Sora version to see how they all compare. Eleven Labs did something interesting with the Sora video as well. Eleven Labs is coming out with a new feature called AI sound effects, where you can give it text prompts like waves crashing, metal clanging, birds chirping, racing car engine, etc., and it will generate the audio and then overlay it on video clips. Eleven Labs is already probably the best text-to-speech generator out there, one of the best AI dubbing tools out there, translation tools. It does a lot of really, really cool stuff. It looks like they're trying to be the full suite of everything you'll need for audio generation. Here's some of the audio it generated laid over some Sora footage. It seems to do a pretty good job, but Eleven Labs had a pretty exciting week even outside of this information, announcing that they're actually now part of the 2024 Disney Accelerator, which makes me think that Disney is very interested in using tools like Eleven Labs to generate voiceovers. Just think about the cartoon world. I don't know if this is a good thing or a bad thing, but if you're Disney and you generate a lot of animations, Eleven Labs is a great way to get a lot of voices into the animations without hiring expensive voice actors. We could be moving into this world now where 
voice actors don't go in and speak line for line everything they're going to say for a movie, but instead they license their voice. They give people like an 11 labs access. And now any movie can generate the voice of that person that they got access to. And it seems like Disney's here for it. If you're curious what the other companies that Disney was looking at for their accelerator, check this out. Audio Shake, a company that uses AI to separate the layers of recorded sound in order to make audio interactive, editable, and customizable. Eleven Labs, Neuro, an autonomous vehicle company that builds custom electric zero occupant vehicles for the delivery of goods. Promethean AI, a company that provides a suite of tools for virtual world creation and digital asset management. And then Status Pro, an immersive entertainment company that leverages virtual and augmented reality to create first person sports gaming experiences. Which which makes sense since Disney owns ESPN. But based on this Disney accelerator, Disney's really going hard into AI and seemingly augmented reality, virtual reality. All right, I'm gonna rapid fire a few more quick announcements that came out this week that are really interesting to me. Opus Clip just introduced Opus Clip 3.0. If you're not familiar with Opus Clip, it's a tool where you can take long form like YouTube videos, plug it into their tool, it will find the moments that it thinks will be viral, turn those into clips, add subtitles, and turn them into like, you know, a short TikTok real kind of video. I haven't actually played with this version yet. I'll likely do a deeper dive video into some of these kinds of tools for a future video, but supposedly this new version is better at finding the viral moments inside of a video, allows you to do different length clips all the way up to 15 minutes. It can actually generate B-roll with AI. This isn't it finding stock footage. It can actually now generate text to video B-roll inside of your short clip, like this cute dog riding a motorcycle in space. There's more caption styles, and apparently it's three times faster. So that's Opus Clip 3. Another similar announcement came from Suno. They also announced version three of their Alpha Access. If you're not familiar with Sumo or you forgot, they are a tool that allows you to create music with AI. You enter a single text prompt and it will do the background music, the lyrics, the vocals. It does the whole song for you. Well, this new version apparently has better audio quality and increased expressiveness. You can now generate songs up to two minutes in length. It's faster, has dedicated instrumental support, has expanded language coverage, and you can continue from anywhere. So if you generated a song and it only generated like a half a song, it can actually now generate the rest of the song, including songs that you made with the V2 version. Now, if you have a premium account of Suno, which is 10 bucks a month, you'll see a drop down here with V2 and V3 Alpha. If you select V3 Alpha, it will use this new model. I'm gonna go ahead and paste in a prompt that says a song about AI and why you should follow Matt Wolf on YouTube to stay in the loop with the latest AI news and tools and let's click create. And it was actually really fast. It gave us two songs. Let's try the pop upbeat one here and let's give it a listen. In a world where robots rise and fall, there's a voice that echoes through the digital hall. Matt Wolf, the man who knows it all. He'll keep you informed, standing tall. Oh yeah. Follow Matt Wolf, he's got the AI scoop. From algorithms to neural networks that loop He'll break it down Make it easier to understand The Mad Wolf, you're always in command Almost kind of reminds me of like Owl City or something, but it's really, really good. This version of the song that it generated is roughly a minute long. So I can definitely tell it's higher quality audio, higher quality lyrics, and definitely much longer. And it was much faster to generate. I also shared this recently on Twitter. I think people thought I was trying to make some sort of political statement here. I don't actually follow Tucker Carlson myself. I just thought this was really crazy to see Putin speaking in English. This entire interview was run through a translating AI tool and all of Putin speaking here was translated into English. And it's just so sort of bizarre to hear. Under the rule of Katerina the Great, Russia reclaimed all of its historical lands, including in the South and West. And the voice actually kind of moves along to the lips. If you watch the lips long enough, it you can tell there's something kind of like uncanny about it and it doesn't quite sync up properly, but it was pretty fascinating to watch. Again, not a political statement at all. 
I'm just looking at the tech here. This week, the Justice Department and the U.S. got a chief AI officer, Princeton professor Jonathan Mayer, will advise the department on AI matters. We got the announcement that Windows is getting its own magic eraser tool. We saw a lot of this kind of stuff in like the Galaxy phones. Now it looks like we're gonna be able to do it inside of Windows Photos. You can see in their little demo, they're actually erasing the leash and it makes the leash go away on the dog here. Here's one where they're erasing the people in the background on this photo of the dog. They just sort of highlight the people, click a button and they're gone. So that'll be a pretty cool, helpful feature inside of our Windows Photos app if you're a PC Windows user. This was a pretty interesting story that I found kind of funny. Air Canada lost a court case after a chatbot hallucinated fake policies. Now, not too long ago, there was a story about somebody talking to a chatbot at Chevy and it got them to sell them a Chevy Tahoe for like a dollar or something like that. Well, this time it happened again with Air Canada. Basically, this chatbot for Air Canada told somebody that they can get a refund on some of the cost of their travel due to bereavement, due to a death of a family member or something like that. Air Canada basically said, no, you can't get a refund for travel that already happened. Well, the court basically said, well, your chatbot told the person that they could get a refund, so you have to honor it. So if you are a company that is using an AI chatbot as part of your customer support, just keep in mind that uh, you should probably pay attention to the kinds of things your chatbot is saying because you can and probably will be held accountable for your chatbot telling your customers things that may not be true. And you may have to hold up to the bargain that the chatbot made. And then finally, here's a sort of cryptic tweak that I find interesting, but I also think it's the perfect way to end this video. There will be three to four massive news coming out in the next weeks that will rock the robotics and AI space. Adjust your timelines, it will be a crazy 2024. And if you remember, in 2023, March was the craziest AI month there was. We got GPT-4, we got Midjourney 4, we got Bard, we got announcements around Google's Gemini. All of that kind of stuff was happening in March of 2023. We are about to roll into March of 2024, and it's looking like this spring is going to be another wild, crazy show for the world of AI. I'm here for it. I'm excited. I'm going to be going to a lot of the events this year, so if you're going to a lot of events around tech and AI, I'll probably bump into you. I am absolutely ready for it this year. It is going to be a fun and exciting year in the world of AI. Before I wrap up real quick, two quick announcements. I'm gonna be giving away this NVIDIA GeForce RTX 4080 Super. This is a thousand dollar GPU that can run stable diffusion and all your large language models and things like that locally on your computer. It's a great gaming GPU. It's a, it's a workhorse. It's basically what I got at my computer and it's amazing. I'm gonna give this one away for free in order to enter. All you gotta do is register for the GTC conference from NVIDIA. There's a couple options. There is the in-person option. I will be at GTC in person. And there's the virtual option. It costs money to go in person, but if you wanna watch the virtual sessions, it's totally free. Register for either an in-person pass or the virtual pass, and you'll be entered to win this GeForce 4080. The link to register is in the description of this video so that we can keep track of who is entered and pick a winner in the future. If you are worried about it, make sure that you also screenshot your receipt inside of email to let me know that you registered, but I should be able to find everybody that registered through the special link on this page to be able to pick a winner. The other announcement, I will be at South by Southwest in Austin, Texas. We're doing this AI evening on March 12th from 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. during South by Southwest. It's gonna be a really fun event. We're gonna talk about the future of AI and how it uh, impacts your content marketing and your business. It's gonna be a really, really a great event. Make sure if you do wanna go, you book it soon. March 12th is coming up really fast and those hotels in Austin for South by Southwest, those things, they book up quick. So make sure that if you haven't already, you book your hotel. It's gonna be a fun, fun night. And finally, if you haven't already, make sure you check out futuretools.io. Behind the scenes, I'm kind of in the process of an overhaul, trying to make it more user-friendly, easier to find stuff, and just more helpful overall. So you will be seeing some updates to the site pretty soon. But this is the place where I curate all the coolest tools, all the latest AI news. It's also where you can join the free Future Tools weekly newsletter, where I will send emails directly to your inbox with just the most important AI news, just the coolest AI tools, 
And when you sign up, you get free access to the AI income database, a database of a bunch of cool ways to make money using these AI tools. That's all I got for you. Thank you so much for tuning in. I really appreciate you. If you want to stay in the loop with AI news, AI tutorials, AI research, all of that cool stuff, make sure you like this video, you subscribe to this channel. I'll make sure this kind of video keeps on showing up in your YouTube feed. Thank you again. I really, really appreciate you. Thank you so much to HubSpot for sponsoring this video. You guys rock as well. And uh, yeah, I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.